Billboard handed out the first ever diamond single plaque to Elton John in 1997. Actually, they created the award for his song since no other single had ever sold more copies than the entire population of Switzerland. Nothing else would hit this newly created certification until the 2010s, but with the rise of downloads, streaming, and fandom, the RIAA has now awarded diamond plaques to more than 100 songs for passing 10 million sales equivalents. It's a big milestone stone that we collectively reached in 2023, but I had no idea just how soul draining and exhausting it would be to sit down and not only listen, but also rank 100 extremely mainstream hits. As promised, Sir Elton John is up first with a double A-side single, Something About the Way You Look Tonight, and Candle in the Wind 1997. The latter of those was re-recorded and dedicated to the late Princess Diana, who had recently passed away at that time, and it was a smashing success. Obviously, they had to create a new tier just for him. I think Something About the Way You Look Tonight is the better of the two. I love the organs in the backing of that track, but Candle in the Wind, they're both great. I'm gonna throw that in the A tier. The next one is a song I could probably go the rest of my life without hearing and probably just be, just be dandy. I would be completely fine with that. It's Baby by Justin Bieber featuring Ludacris. This infamous song continues to live on and I think it'll get passed down to future generations as a relic of the old west of the internet. Back in my day, we used to dislike Justin Bieber videos. I'll be polite and move Baby into the D tier because I do have the softest little spot in my heart for it. Not Afraid is how Detroit rapper Eminem chose to introduce himself to the 2010s. It was a fresh decade and he was coming off a lot of victories and losses and personal change. And Not Afraid is anthemic, but it's also extremely generic and you can hear it once and just rinse and repeat the words out the other ear. I'm gonna put it in the C tier. It's teetering on D, but we're gonna stick at C because we have even more Eminem to come. Now this is how you do a pop smash. Bad Romance, Lady Gaga, this was at a time when her dominance was just starting to take over the entire world, and this was the song that just proved she was so much more than just a pop fluke. Calling this a pop track kind of in a way does it a disservice. It's so much more. The bridge is fantastic. That iconic build to that last chorus. There is not a foot sitting still if this song comes on. Get on the dance floor, S tier. Radioactive is the song that made Imagine Dragons a household name in the early 2010s. And at the time, I had a deep love for this song. I really did. I was really into dubstep and electronic music at the time, in addition to always being a rock lover. So seeing the way that they paired these two things, it was a nice idea in theory, but I don't think it's aged all that well. And a lot of that is thanks to the mishandling of the production by Alex DeKid. Remember Macklemore? Remember when he had Ryan Lewis with him? Yeah, they've got a couple of songs that are certified diamond, and the first of those is, you guessed it, what, 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 what? Thrift Shop! It's so easy to hate on this song and just throw an elbow in, jump on top of the pile, dogpile it and say it's shit, but I really can't hate this song. It's too much fun. It's kind of amazing, and I don't at all hate this song. In fact, I really do still like it. I'm throwing it in the B tier. Already back to Lady Gaga, Poker Face went diamond. This is another smash from her early career. In fact, this came out prior to Bad Romance. This was on The Fame. Poker Face is one of Gaga's most iconic singles. Everything about the sensual imagery that you can feel without even seeing the video. It just drips in its own brand of charisma, and I love this track dearly, S-tier. Canadian pop star Carly Rae Jepsen has had a career trajectory that I don't think any of us could have predicted, especially after Call Me Maybe. I'll never forget going to Bonnaroo in 2012, and people were holding up signs with jokes about Call Me Maybe. It was written all over walls outside of the festival. It was crazy how big of a landmark cultural moment this felt like. I wouldn't call it a full-on reset, but it is what it is. 
The song's kind of annoying, but it's also got this cute energy to it that I can't deny. I'll put it right down the middle and go C tier. I don't think you're gonna hear me say the phrase modern classic too often when talking about these 100 diamond certified songs, but Uptown Funk by Mark Ronson and Bruno Mars is absolutely one of them. The big band swing, the organic swell to the instrumentation, the performance from Bruno Mars. For that reason, it's going S tier. I was kind of shocked to see that the Eye of the Tiger referencing Roar by Katy Perry was her first diamond certified single. I can't really stretch the truth here and say that this is an awesome awful song. I just think it's very agitating. The timing pianos are really cheesy and irritating, and I think Katie is honestly too on this. Her vocals are a bit grating by like the fourth time that chorus hits, so I'm throwing this one down in the D tier. You want to talk cultural resets for real? Then let's talk about Royals by Lord because its minimalism was exactly that. Lord's first two albums, Pure Heroin and Melodrama, are masterpieces in their own right. I think they still hold up and then some, and I feel like putting Royals anything less than S would be doing it a disservice. You know I'm all about that bass, no trouble. You know everybody in the studio was just high five at each other when they came up with that, like, oh my god, that is a Smash! All we gotta do is appropriate some 60s doo-wop, toss it on top, throw it in a blender, and you're drinking a shit smoothie, F tier. Despacito by Louis Fonzi, Daddy Yankee, and of course this is the remix, thus featuring the non-Spanish speaker Justin Bieber. This had one of the longest runs ever atop the Billboard Hot 100. It held that throne for more than 15 weeks, I believe, and I think the track is fine for what it is. It's kind of got this calm, suave, sexy energy. I'm gonna put it in the C tier. I think I prefer the original, but the remix is still not bad. I'm just kind of like indifferent, and if it's on in the background, fine. Katy Perry felt like she was doing way too much on Firework. This was one of many singles that hit number one from her album Teenage Dream, and this is maybe the worst of them. It's kind of head to head with that in ET. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and move that one down to the D tier, because that feels very appropriate for a song that's kind of agonizing. A pair of Eminem tracks are up next, Lose Yourself and Love the Way You Lie. Lose Yourself from the 8 Mile soundtrack is one of Eminem's meme-generating hits that just keeps living, and Love the Way You Lie is pretty great in its own way too. I like the Rihanna feature here, and it's definitely better than their second teaming up on The Monster. I'm friends with the mom. Oh, who? James P. Sullivan? I'm definitely shooting off my white boy flair with this take, but I think Lose Yourself is one of the best rap tracks ever made. I'm putting that in the S tier all the way, and Love the Way You Lie is surprisingly good at handling some much deeper and darker themes like domestic abuse, Rihanna kills the chorus, and I love their energy. I'll put it in the A tier. Up next is a song that's the opposite of The Vibes Are Immaculate. In fact, The Vibes Are Horrible and Cringeworthy. It's Robin Thicke and Company with Blurred Lines. I cannot think of another massive single that got this big where the tide has turned against it so quickly. Obviously, the song did not age well. Its treatment of women in the song's message and the music video, absolutely not great at all. But this song only came out 10 years ago and everyone seemed to love it back then, but now I can say what I was saying then. This song is fucking abysmal. Everybody's performance on it from T.I. to Pharrell. Come on, man, you can do so much better, and Robin Thicke in particular, just the biggest shit stain right there. F tier all the way. I Got a Feelin' by the Black Eyed Peas has such a good aura to it. I love the positivity that I feel still when this song will come on. I think it's one of the best things that the Black Eyed Peas ever did. Unlike maybe something like Boom Boom Pal that has not aged well at all, the technological references in there were just kind of heavy-handed cringe. This one is fun, nostalgic, it gives off a summer spirit, and I'm putting it in A tier. The song that no one expected that just would not die was the hit of 2011, 2012, and maybe even 2013, Party Rock Anthem by LMFAO. It's corny as hell, but it's also well enough intentioned. It's harmless fun in a way. Its squeaky drops are very irritating, so for that, points off, but I'll still put it in the C. Counting Stars by One Rep Public has to be one of the last great things that Ryan Tedder was ever a part of. In fact, he wrote this song entirely by himself 
which I don't understand why we don't value something like that over like 80 co-writers that water it down into nothing. But I digress, I think Counting Stars is a pretty great track. It has a nice soul about it. It actually feels like it has a personality, and I'm gonna put it up in the A tier. Believe me when I say that I wouldn't mind putting up a punching bag that has the Chainsmokers and their music all over it so I could just go to town, but Closer featuring Halsey is not one of those moments that I think is anywhere close to bad. It's incredibly catchy, and for a while I was sick of it, but returning now is a not-so-sick boy B-tier. You know what really grinds my gears? Florida Georgia Line saying, Baby, you a song. A person can, in fact, not be a song. Baby, you are not a song. I'm not gonna hop up in your Chevy. Not with the lift kit. Not even if it has the fucking Mini Cooper lift. I'm sorry. This song makes me irrationally mad. Crews, we're just gonna go ahead and take and just... F tier. Hey, Siri, what's my name? You're Jonathan. But since we are friends, I get to call you Juicy J. <laughs> Three Six Mafia rapper Juicy J teamed up with Katy Perry for a very weird trap pop pairing from her album Prism Dark Horse. Ten years ago, this guy would have told you, hey, this is one of the best pop songs on the market right now. But I've soured on it quite a bit since then. The rap verse is still kind of funny in a very uncanny valley type of way. The redundancy of the beat can make it very agitating, which makes me feel like I'm kind of on the fence about it in a way, so I'm gonna go safe bet C tier. Just the way you are is as safe as they come. It's Bruno confessing that this woman is just everything is perfect, baby. Don't change a thing, okay? Not for me, not for anybody. And it's a fence rider in every sense of that phrase. C tier. Shape of You by Ed Sheeran was the biggest song of 2017. In fact, at first, I thought it was a pretty solid pop hit. It was something different for Ed, and I was like, okay, maybe it's not as bad as people are saying it is. And on those first handful of listens, it can be kind of catchy. It has this chiming quality to it that drip feeds you the energy of the song, and it does have a nice pacing to it. But after maybe a dozen listens, you're starting to get a little bit fatigued. And considering this song, much like a plague, was inescapable, after about 1,050 plays and it comes on at CVS or when you're grocery shopping, you just want to leave the store immediately. This is not an F tier song, but I've soured on this a whole lot and I'll put it in D. Sheeran's got another track up next. This is Thinking Out Loud from Multiply, which I still think is his best project overall. This is a song that definitely gets it right. When others later, like Perfect, are just so on the nose, Thinking Out Loud has those ruminations and inclinations, but it doesn't just give every little thing away in terms of genericism. In contrast, if Shape of You is D, then we're gonna go B tier, Thinking Out Loud. I'm floating back to the year 2012, and We Are Young is one of those songs that immediately comes to mind. The trio Fun, who were really taking off after their signing to Fueled by Ramen, featuring Janelle Monet. This song is electric in a very subdued kind of manner. But I'm gonna put this in the S tier. Sorry, I just had to grab something from back here. Well, you done done me and you bet I felt it. Maybe I just awakened a demon deep inside of your soul, a, a hatred that's been lying dormant for this white person with ukulele covering I'm Yours by Jason Mraz. But I think I'm far enough removed from the track at this point to see it more objectively. I liked it at first when it came out. It definitely appealed to whoever the fuck I was in 2008. I'm gonna put it in the B tier. But I won't hesitate no more, no more! kept hearing the name The Weeknd, and I was like, that, that's a dumb name. I, I don't like that. I don't want to listen to that. But then I heard The Hills and realized how dumb I was being. The production on The Hills is immaculate. I love the dark nighttime creeping and crawling sensation that I get from it. It's like lurking somewhere in a shadow, and I definitely think this one is worthy of S tier. 
I was pleasantly surprised when I recently accidentally stumbled across the music video for See You Again and I listened to the track. It's got Charlie Puth, Wiz Khalifa, and for a while, the song from Furious 7 after the death of Paul Walker, it was everywhere. It was unavoidable. It was like a magnet just pulling you in. And I hated this song for a while because of it, but obviously that's not fair. And while what I'm doing with this tier list is based on opinion, I also want to include some objectivity when I can, and for that reason, I think this is a well-constructed, heartfelt tune that does have some great moments on it, and I'll put it in the B tier. Yay, we get to talk about Drake, the most underrated rapper of all time. Come on, man. Guys, you're sleeping on him. He's the GOAT. God's plan. Remember that one? The one where Drake in the music video went around doing some good deeds, giving out like a million dollars throughout the music video? That song, you probably remember more for the video and the stuff surrounding it than the actual song itself because the song, while not one of his worst, I generally do like the beat on this one. I think it's so repetitive. It just keeps smacking you in the head with the flow that's not very good and very choppy. Drake sounding like he's asleep at the wheel? Never. But I am gonna have to put this one in the C tier. C is for Congratulations by Post Malone and Quavo, which, fun fact, at the time of recording this video, Post Malone has the most diamond certified singles out of any artist ever. Ever. Congratulations is what it is. It's off of Stony, which is a very mixed bag of an album, in fact, leaning into the not so good. But there are moments that I think are salvageable, and this is one of those. The entire rise of Lil Nas X was simply glorious, and I'm happy to have witnessed it firsthand. I think a lot of his music is pretty fun, if not great, and Old Town Road strikes the perfect chord between ironic, but it's actually sounding good, and maybe that has a lot to do with him sampling Nine Inch Nails, pulling from the Ghost series and Trent Reznor, but at the same time, the beat can't do everything, and Lil Nas X being so deadpan and serious with his delivery is just great, and Billy Ray Cyrus hopping on a remix is incredible. A moment of silence for Fetty Wap's career, and with him behind bars now at this point, I just don't see that resurfacing, but Trap Queen is genuinely, unironically, a fantastic bop. S tier all the way, baby. 1738, the Remy boys, it put everything on the map and then everything kind of crumbled and went to shit, but it is what it is and this song must live on forever. We circle back to Ed Sheeran with what I was saying earlier about thinking out loud being the positive spectrum for a confessional love song, just looking with eyes of adoration. On the flip side of that coin, we have Perfect. The problem is on Ed's shoulders here, and I'm putting it in the D tier. Shake It Off felt like an unmitigated disaster when I first put ears to it, and maybe it's just me having heard the lows that she can hit with the likes of Look What You Made Me Do, but I do think that I unfairly judged this song out of the gate. This is by no means a gold standard of pop or anywhere close to Taylor Swift's best song, but I do think that I like it for being kind of cheeky. Still though, there are so many annoying parts to this song, and I am I'm not getting down to this sick beat. So let's just put it right in the middle, C. Okay, little minion, let's play rock, paper, scissors for if I actually have to talk about Happy by Pharrell, the dog shit track from your movie, remember that? All right, rock, paper, scissors, damn it! Happy is like if somebody put fish hooks in your mouth and was like, you need to smile more. Why don't you smile more often? This song that crossed over from a kid's movie to become a mainstream staple clearly makes me go feral. So I'm gonna leave it alone for now and just F. BB Rexa joined country duo Florida Georgia Line, the legends themselves, for a song that goes, if it's meant to be, it'll be, it'll be, baby, just let it be. That's just weak songwriting. Frontal lobe headaches like this don't come around every day, and thank God for that, because this is absolutely abysmal from start to finish. Just everybody phones it in, it feels like. The production makes it feel even more washed out and tacky. F. Bruno Mars went diamond with another early hit, Grenade, which I always would change the lyrics to. I would toss a grenade at ya. They wanted him to be a hit maker, and a hit maker he became, and he got better as he went on. And we'll get to some of those moments later, but for now, we're putting him in the C tier yet again. Pumped Up Kicks by the Indian alternative band Foster the People is one of my favorite crossover success stories ever. The atmosphere of this song is unreal. It's tried and 
true. I obviously don't think it's glamorizing what it's talking about with the idea of someone going rogue like this and taking on other people, but the song for what it is is just a moment, a staple, a reset, S-tier. All of Me by John Legend is radio fodder, it's generic, it's oh baby, I, I, I'll, I've got all of you, you got all of me, and I do think that there is a sweetness underlying it, it's just very vanilla. I'm going C tier. Sorry, John Legend. The shark, the myth, the legend, a children's song gone rogue, infecting the entire world with did 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 do. Baby Shark really was like kid song meet mainstream and explode. It's cute and all, but it's also annoying as fuck, so I'm placing it accordingly. Two from Post Malone up next, Rockstar featuring 21 Savage, as well as the Swaley assisted Sunflower from the Spider-Man soundtrack. I love the latter of those especially, but both of them are pretty good songs. Rockstar had me taking Posty and 21 Savage a little bit more seriously because of when it came out, so I'm putting that in the B tier, and Sunflower, so chill, so smooth, the ultimate vibe, very surprising that I love it as much as I do, but A tier. Ironically, Sam Smith did not go diamond with their song Diamonds, but with Stay With Me. Such a vanilla radio ballad if I've ever heard one. Sam's vocals aren't so much the problem as it is this kind of gospel-tinged pop just feeling so washed out and void of a personality. It's okay, it's harmless, but C tier. All right, everyone in the audience watching right now, I want you to put your hands up because it's a party in the USA. Miley Cyrus was just about to outgrow the Disney Channel, but in 2009, just before that happened, we got one last child-friendly bop that also has just the ever so slightest amount of edge to it. She really sells the awkward confidence here. I love the little guitar loop that this is built off of. That chorus is huge. I'm going A tier. Next up is Sicko Mode by Travis Scott featuring Drake. And I can't help but feel that this is overrated, at least by hip hop fans. People almost look at this like some sort of holy grail statement. And it is a solid hip hop song with a pretty good beat switch up but it's not really that immaculate or game-changing. I'm gonna put it in the C tier. I think there's some good stuff happening in the song. I just don't come back to it. I had to listen to Bodak Yellow by Cardi B again and be reminded all over again why this was one of my worst songs of 2017. I genuinely don't see any appeal to Cardi B. I think her flows are terrible, the lyrics are generally trash, and the beat selection is super questionable, and this is one of the worst things that she ever did. I think an obvious F tier is fitting. Cheer up, Buttercup, just when you thought all was lost for humanity. Bodak, Yellow, Cardi B, no, we're switching lanes all the way to the tune of Queen FM. It's Bohemian Rhapsody. Rhapsody? <laughs> it's Bohemian Rhapsody by Freddie Mercury and Company, one of the greats of all time. What, do you want me to sit here and have a philosophical debate about why I'm putting this S tier? No, you're not gonna question it. And also, if you haven't heard this song, I don't believe you. Sorry by Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry for my sorry. This song is so much fun. The beat is infectious. I love the vocals here. It's just got this chilled out tropical flavor to it, and I still think Purpose is the best album that he's ever made. Sorry's got nothing on company. Just gonna float it out there, but I think it's above What Do You Mean, and I'm surprised this wasn't the lead single from the album, A tier. From A to F, Train Have Your Back, Baby. Hey Soul Sister was a comeback hit for the band, unfortunately. Where to even begin with how awful this song is? First of all, Pat Monahan is genuinely a terrible lyricist, and this is one of the biggest examples of that. One minute he's talking about untrimmed chest hair, then he's so gangster, so thug, and he's singing about fucking Mr. Mr. on the radio. It's, it's just get it out of my head and put it in the F. All of my apple bottom jean enthusiasts, I'm gonna need a show of hands down in the comments. There's only one flow and one 
Ryder and his first big hit, Low, is diamond certified, baby. Musical duo 21 Pilots got their first diamond plaque for their hit song, Stressed Out. I got tired of it for a while, but I really do relate to the core message of the song about adulting and everything like that, so is it a bit cheesy? Yes, but I forgive it to the tune of an A tier. One of the most surprising hits in modern times is also one of the greatest. It's Somebody That I Used To Know by Gautier featuring Kembra. The palpable emotion, the heart on its sleeve, confessional nature of this breakup song is an anthem in its own right, and the music being so beautiful and artistic and just very unique to boot, it all goes up to the tune of an S tier. Okay, now Bruno Mars is cooking with fire. That's what I like. Mr. Mars had clearly moved on from the just the way you are, I'd catch a grenade for you era, and he was into doing his own thing, and 24 Karat Magic was an album that celebrated kind of that party lifestyle, but also, hey girl, I'm here for you. Lucky for you, my good sir, that is also what I like, so A tier it is. Oh, I think I spoke too soon. Another Bruno Mars song back to back. This is When I Was Your Man, it's another kind of generic piano ballad. It's fine, it's pretty, but it loses potency after you sit there and listen to it a few times. It starts to get a little bit see-through. C-tier, no harm, no foul, but also no real lasting interest. If ever there was a sleeper hit, it is Sail by AWOL Nation. I don't know if it was early 2010's memes propelling this, or if it was that Mika Kitty music video, or a combination of everything and just the song generally being pretty great. As I put Sail into the A tier, I will say that it's super impressive that this lasted for 79 weeks on the Hot 100. That's the fourth longest ever. Maroon 5 put a black light on their whistling fetish with moves like Jagger featuring Christina Aguilera, which isn't exactly the problem that I think a lot of people think it is because Maroon 5 hit the tipping point here with their mainstream factor but it got so much worse but I don't really hate this the way that I thought I would when going back to it so I'm gonna give it a spot in the C tier rapper XXX Tentacion had his single sad certified diamond posthumously and it's unfortunate but I do think this is one of his better songs and I'm not here to cast judgment I'm just here to cast a ranking I'm gonna put sad in the B tier. I think it's extremely catchy, well-constructed, kind of a nice emo pop rap bop. I'm starting to feel like a rodeo clown out here where I'm just waiting for a bull to come and run me over because I'm wearing red and the red in this scenario happens to be Imagine Dragons. Two more of their songs went diamond back to back, those being Demons and Believer and both are kind of insufferable in their own way. Demons I find personally problematic because it's so surface level about like, oh, these are my problems and what do I do? It's where my demons hide over the most generic coffee shop acoustic music ever. On the other hand, Believer is workout music for people who post themselves 87 times a day at the gym. Guys, I go two to three times a week. It is possible to go and not post 87 stories, I promise. Call me Pontius Pilate because I wash my hands of these D tier for both. Major Lazer and DJ Snake had a diamond certified hit in Lean On. The song was everywhere in 2015. I wouldn't say this really changes any kind of conversation one way or the other. It is generic, it's mainstream, it's danceable, it's kind of fun, and it's very repetitive. It's also very annoying. So it's got pros, it's got cons right down the middle. C tier. The 2017 single Havana by Camilla Cabello featuring Young Thug is a member of the Diamond Club and a lot of people find this song very annoying because of the way the vocals are styled but I kind of like the Latin pop package that's presented. It's very catchy. It's by no means a game changer but still I think it's good enough for the B tier. Not that I'm exactly lining up to talk about Kanye West modern day but still Stronger is a song that I can disassociate from whoever the hell Ye has become this horrible, toxic person that needs help desperately. The rhythm and tempo are so good, and I think that Kanye is in top form on this track, so I'm gonna slide it into the A tier. Songs like Super Bass by Nicki Minaj are why this list has taken me two days to shoot, because I just have to keep walking away because my brain is literally not responding. Even though I'm gonna put this in the F tier pretty confidently, I think that Nicki has even worse songs. I'm surprised that Starships 
isn't diamond certified, but at the same time, I'm kind of happy about that. Life is Good by Future and Drake once again proves that putting these two rap superstars together is just like pairing two random people in the NBA or really any sport and just assuming that they're automatically going to make gold. That is not the case at all. Life is Good is legit boring as hell. I hate the beat switch here. I don't like the production at all and both rappers just sound like they're phoning it the hell in. Girls Like You by Maroon 5 apparently wasn't doing well enough for Adam Levine's liking, so his ego said, hey, let's call up yet another famous guest that is going to say yes when we ask for a feature. Cardi B hops on the remix, and what do you know, this song goes diamond. Late at night as my mind fades away into another universe, I can sometimes hear the faint calling of these super wimpy guitars and laughable lyrics from Adam and a super bad verse that doesn't fit with the song at all from Cardi. Bag it, tag it, F tier. You can run, but you can never hide. Just in time for Christmas in July, it's Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas Is You, which is unsurprisingly diamond, it is a staple of the season. You cannot go a holiday season without hearing this at least a dozen times, if you're lucky. Hearing it constantly just zaps that magic away, and I know this song is like never going to die, so right in the middle, C tier. I love The Box by rapper Roddy Rich, if not for just the song itself, for the sheer fact that it blocked Yummy by Justin Bieber from toppling its way to the top of the charts. Roddy presented himself to the world as an interesting voice in hip-hop with this track, and I'm gonna throw it all the way up in the A. The pairing of Cardi B, J Balvin, and Bad Bunny on I Like It is incredibly obnoxious. My love for the original song salvages this ever so slightly, but everybody just comes across is so unlikable on this track, I'm just gonna have to write it off as a loss and put it in the D tier. Tennessee Whiskey by Chris Stapleton is quite literally a diamond in the rough when it comes to diamond certified tracks from country artists. We've been dealing with F for Florida Georgia line up to this point, and Chris Stapleton is a breath of fresh air. My mind is a sugar cube away from imploding. Maroon 5, Sugar, The Wedding Song, the one that everyone is dancing to. White people are gonna be having this at their wedding for the next, like, 50 years, and I am not prepared for that mentally. My hatred for this song is like honey sticking to everything. It's everywhere, F tier. I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston, a cover originally performed by Dolly Parton, recorded by many artists, but I would argue that this is probably the most well-known and iconic version, the Bodyguard soundtrack. It's an incredible song in many ways, but I also feel that Whitney has other hits that are just so much better, and maybe it's the memes, maybe it's me having heard it too much. I'm probably gonna catch some heat for this, but do what you must, B tier. The late rapper Juice World, Jared Higgins, went diamond with Lucid Dreams, a massive staple of the SoundCloud emo rap scene. Arguably, he became the face of that movement. In a lot of ways, its success is dependent on its sample, but I kind of like the booming trap appeal added on top of that, and his emotive performance. You could tell that there's kind of something that's tearing at his armor, ripping it away, and this song just came out. Khalid is an artist that showed a lot of promise early on. I think he's a talented guy, his voice is generally pretty great, although his music has gotten very, very sleepy, and I don't think Location is one of his better songs. It was huge, and I can see the appeal with some of the muted chords, the kind of dissonance, and the emotional angle that it's approached from. I just personally prefer other songs like 18, Young, Dumb, and Broke, but I will still put this one in the C tier. Let's kick it back to the Twilight Saga with A Thousand Years by Christina Perry. I had almost completely forgotten about about this artist, but it took me back to songs like Jar of Hearts, and obviously this one that were huge, and I think Christina definitely has a great emotional presence, and the strings and the atmosphere that surround this track are pretty great and hard to deny. I'm trying to ignore the context that this was kind of written for like a vampire wedding between Bella and Edward, and I'm just gonna put it in the B tier and say it's a sweet song. The Weeknd scored two more diamonds.
Diamond certified hits back to back. The first of those blinding lights is an S tier moment. This is one of the best pop songs probably of all time. I can never get enough of its synthetic approach, but also the tender vocals and the way the entire song was immaculately conceived. Starboy lands ever so slightly lower, Daft Punk kill it on the production, and the biting lyrics are fantastic. I'm gonna slide that one into the A tier. It's great to see an appearance from my girl Kesha, although it's unfortunately attached to Timber with Pitbull, so that's kind of a double-edged sword. If you can make it through Mr. Worldwide listing off all of his trademark cliches about sexy women, dancing, Dale, Miami, Mr. 305, all of that nonsense, it's kind of a fun song, especially if you're drunk. We finally arrived at Thunder by Imagine Dragons. It is indeed a diamond certified hit. How did we let this happen? Kill it with a bolt of lightning like this is Uncle Baby Billy out of the Righteous Gemstones. And let's just go ahead and put this in the F tier, in the grave that it deserves and that it's earned. Ah, the Chainsmokers, we meet again, this time on not such great circumstances because we're talking about Don't Let Me Down featuring Daya. You could definitely do a lot worse with the Chainsmokers, but since songs like Break Wake Up Every Night are not diamond certified, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this very one-noted, drop-centric track in the D tier. Heathens made 21 Pilots superstars, and a lot of the fandom was very torn on that. I remember the Blurry Face era just being divisive for the simple fact that they were scoring some very mainstream hits. Heathens was attached to the Suicide Squad soundtrack, but thankfully it outlived the movie and really outclassed it. I'm gonna put Heathens in the A tier. I really like what they did here. It's kind of this unnerving, paranoid track that has a lot going for it. I cannot in good faith say the same thing for Unforgettable by French Montana featuring Sway Lee. I did a double take when I saw this on the Diamond list. I had to double check that this was actually a hit song because despite its title, it's ironically something that I had completely forgotten. When Sway Lee drops the line, I want to give it to her like we're in a marriage. I just, I'm like, all right, I'm going off the clock at this point. Just put it in the F tier. Let's be done. The recording industry finally certified two of Michael Jackson's singles as Diamond, those being Billie Jean and Thriller. Both of these are mesmerizingly iconic for different reasons. My favorite of the two goes to Billie Jean, which I'm putting in the S tier. The storytelling here, the entire idea of this lover's quarrel is just spiraling into something so amazing, so iconic. The song can stand on its own just from the music, but when you dive a little deeper into the lyrics, it rewards you. Thriller, on the other hand, is not quite as great, but still obviously a legend for what it is. I think maybe the music video elevates it to that next level, but purely based on the song itself, I'm throwing it in the A tier. Drip Too Hard is a song by rappers Lil Baby and Gunna. And while Lil Baby has proven himself to see the bigger picture and has broken out somewhat from that kind of squandering trap scene, Gunna is extremely exhausting, one-noted, and just makes me so egregiously angry. Locked Out of Heaven is the moment where I lowered my shades and raised my eyebrows and thought to myself, this Bruno Mars guy is better than what his initial singles would have ever implied. This is probably still my favorite thing he's ever done and an obvious S tier placement. Look at that, it's the return of the Mac to the menu. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis can't hold us. Everything be damned, this is a great party song with a lot of energy. I love what they capture on this track. The chorus is genuinely fantastic from Ray Dalton. And while there's other songs on the list that run laps around it, I'm still putting this in the B tier. I'm swimming in regret over an appearance by Wagon Wheel by Darius Rucker, Hootie and the Blowfish, gone country solo artist. If you're wondering why this song would be crawling up under my skin and just giving me the heebie-jeebies, it's because I can picture all of the terrible parties that I walked into like a decade ago where this song would just be blasting and every white person would gather around drunkenly screaming the lyrics, rock me mama like a wagon wheel. I want nothing to do with this at all. Just slap it with an F tier and get it away from me. Coldplay entering the diamond certified spectrum is great, but then I realized it was attached to the chain Smokers, which takes it away a bit, but to be fair, something just like this is one of the best things the Chainsmokers were ever a part of. It's so close to A tier, but not quite. Post Malone scored two more diamond hits, with Psycho featuring Ty Dolla Sign, as well as his first ever breakthrough single, White Iverson. 
I can't tell you how corny I thought White Iverson was the first few times I heard it. In fact, for the first few years, I just totally wrote it off, dismissed it, and thought that this was just some guy that was gonna be a passing fad. I didn't know anything about him, so I wrote it off entirely. Naturally, curiosity got the best of me, and I came to really enjoy a lot of Posty's stuff that he puts out, including Psycho. I think that's such a chill song with a great hook on it. Ty Dolla Sign is smooth as butter. I will put Psycho in the B tier, and for White Iverson, it grew on me immensely. There's just something about it that shouldn't be as good as it is, but it's fine at the same time. Let's go C tier. Suddenly, there's a numbness, a tingling. It's almost like... I can't feel my face. Another absolute masterclass from the weekend, shortly after I fell in love with The Hills, this song was on my radar and probably everyone's in 2015. The pre-chorus vocal, she told me don't worry, it's probably my favorite part of the entire song and we're going all the way to the top, baby. Up next, it's a double serving of Drake and our Drake marathon that continues on. We have Hotline Bling in one dance. Actually, sarcasm aside, this has been the happiest I've been to talk about him this entire time. Hotline Bling Marimba version used to be my ringtone years ago, and I really do like Drake's understated presence. It's just a very chill time. I'm gonna put Hotline Bling in the A tier. While one dance, it's definitely a step down. It relies a lot on repetition, very monotonous. I'll put it in the C tier. Now you want to talk about actual goats in the rap game, here's Lil Wayne, Lollipop, featuring the late Static Major. It sounds so bad and flat out wrong to say Lollipop was a huge part of my childhood, but here we are. Lil Wayne can definitely come across very out of pocket with some of his lyrics, but I generally do like the production on Lollipop a lot. It's stupid, but it's stupid fun. We did it, Joe! We made it to possibly my favorite song that I've been wanting to talk about this entire time, but it was like number 96 that got certified and we're going in order. Pursuit of Happiness by Kid Cudi. The indie alternative duo MGMT and Ratatat tag team this thing and Pursuit of Happiness, quite literally, even though they say not everything is gonna turn to gold, this turns to gold. This song is everything that I could ever want in some sort of rap, pop alternative crossover. The guitars are perfect. The flow is perfect. The immaculate summer vibes are everything. In case I didn't make it clear, S tier, this is one of my favorite songs of all time. EXO Tour Life by Lil Uzi Vert came out of the SoundCloud rap emo era and just really transcended genres by becoming this huge hit. It felt very disheveled to me. I really don't like much about this song. I really don't see what all the hype's about. D tier. Fireflies by Owl City is one of the most unexpected number one hit songs ever made. Adam Young was somebody that I followed for a couple of years before he really took off thanks to this song and the album Ocean Eyes. But even cutting that out, I do love the naivety of this one. There's plenty of other Owl City tracks that I adore a lot more still, and I am a fan of his early stuff, not so much the later years. I'm gonna put Fireflies in the B tier. Finally, we have made it to number 100, the end of the line for the Diamond Certified Circuit. It's Halsey without me. I am completely unhinged at this point. I don't even know what's coming out of my mouth. But Without Me by Halsey is a song that actually started to change my perspective on her as an artist. Thankfully, we are ending this tier list on a good note. I am moving Without Me into the B tier. Thank you so much if you made it to the end of this long-winded video where I decided to rank the first 100 Diamond Certified songs ever. Even more have been certified at this point. The full list is linked in the description. Please do me a huge favor, like the video, share it out, and check out another one on screen now.